Here's this week's Steam Code Raffle winner. I give a Steam Code for a free game away with every video I do, and all you have to do to enter is leave a comment that wouldn't violate Twitter's terms of service. Make sure you have contact info in your YouTube profile so I can reach out to you. A complete list of games to choose from is in the description below. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a chance to win. Now on with the show! I'm playing something almost every week, and sometimes I want to talk about it and give you a vertical slice. So stick with me for some lightning reviews. This week on The Chopping Block. This week I've been playing Hi-Fi Rush, as everyone can well recall, this game came pretty much out of nowhere when Microsoft Stealth released it after a Microsoft and Bethesda press conference. I only heard about it after the fact, because after my recent indulgences in examining press events, I still find them absolutely insufferable and made to attract magpies, but I digress. I saw the game's style, and that it was an action game somewhat akin to Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, but the main key that made me genuinely curious and have my interest perk up was when it was relayed that in addition to being a spectacle fighter, it was also something of a rhythm game. By this point, my affinity for rhythm games should be well established, but my experience with cross genres that have melded with rhythm games is rather limited. The only other one I can really think of offhand is sound shapes on the PlayStation 3, 4, and Vita. I'm aware of the first person shooter genre recently having combined boomer shooters with rhythm games with things like BPM Bullets Per Minute and Metal Hellsinger, and I've heard things about like Crypt of the Necrodancer, but I'm getting sidetracked at this point. Hi Fi Rush starts off with our main character, Chai, as in Chai T, having a bum arm and going to a major corporation in order to get a position to work for what I can only interpret as it's the only way for him to be able to afford an expensive and high tech prosthetic. Thesis. Chai begins the procedure for the prosthesis and has it successfully attached, but something goes wrong where his MP3 player gets mixed up in the circuitry, and then his onboarding procedure goes awry and he has to end up fighting robotic enforcers for the Mega Corporation. After being forced to defend himself, he gets wrapped up in the affairs of a small resistance group against the company, and discovers an insidious plot where the evil corporation is doing evil corporation things. It's a serviceable story plot, and it does well enough, but I love two things about it. First of all is the constant communication of character and humor through the various involved people and the environment. The resistance group you find yourself part of expands as the story moves along, and I found some of the characters endearing, and whenever humor was attempted, I found myself laughing more often than not. My favorite character was probably Cinnamon, the analysis robot who bluntly informs people of their flawed character traits, but can't relay emotion on their face, so he's constantly scribbling on his own face with a dry erase marker to feign expression. The quirky characters also extends to the bosses and the variety of their fights and levels were also immensely entertaining. Moderate spoiler here, but I found it rather hilarious that the way you defeat one of the bosses was to make him drain his account until his department was entirely defunded, at which point his encounter ends. I found this enjoyable because he'd been getting built up, and the robot assembling behind him indicated that we were going to be in for one hell of a fight, but in the final stage of assembly, he runs out of funds and it becomes an inert hunk of metal just sitting idly behind him. And this is by no means the only bit of humor and subversion injected throughout the story. Secondly is the parallel with modern American society, where a guarantee of healthcare is often attached to a job, and I relish seeing a rebellion against that, if only by proxy. If I'm being honest, quite frankly, I'd like to go to a bunch of corporate bigwigs like the one that would price gouge insulin myself, and smack them upside the head with a guitar. Alas, I must settle for this digital realm. But enough of the story characters and world building. As one can establish, the most crucial part of any video game, and particularly rhythm games, is how the gameplay performs. In this element, I'll I'll admit very early on that I was feeling down on the game. How the combat works is that you have your standard light attack, heavy attack, dodge, and parry mechanics. However, the element that blends it all together is there is a constant and consistent paced musical track in the background, and by matching your button presses to the beat, you can give yourself extra damages, score bonus, or other mechanical incentives. The initial hurdle I struggled to overcome with was the fact that when it comes to attacking, there is a slight delay between button input and the attack being performed. I don't mean lag. It has mechanics to try and compensate for that if that is the case. What I mean is that when you're on the beat and you press the light attack button, it takes a quarter beat for the animation to actually execute, and a half a beat for the heavy attack to initiate. This gave me a weird sense of disconnect because, as a drummer, I'm used to an action being performed exactly on the time that I intend. This also made things feel weirder when things like the parry or dodge mechanics do execute instantly instead of having to wait for the quarter or half count of the animation to finish going. However, after about two hours, something changed. My brain bridged the gap of the timing disconnect, and when that happened, the gameplay and feel entirely changed. I started looking forward to and relishing combat experiences because all the while, I would find my hands bopping while holding the controller and my foot tapping to the backing track while racking up combos, dodging between enemies, and chasing scores. If you keep your actions on time, you get damage bonuses on the enemies, and the audio and video feedback creates a sense of gratification that will drive you to seeking maximum satisfaction. Additionally, some of the characters you encounter and recruit in your resistance group eventually get the ability to assist you in combat with shield breaker or staggering abilities, and calling them in the middle of a combo and hearing their 
their contributions to the underlying percussion beat that you're inflicting upon someone's face begins to create a violent symphony that many times you don't want to stop composing. Oftentimes, these allies become necessary for certain enemies, and this can lead to a minor criticism, where you do need to wait a couple seconds for their cooldown to end in order to move on with the individual fight. Some particular enemies can also be combated by having them initiate parry sequences, which can bring things to a grinding halt, but I never begrudged it too much, because the sense of satisfaction for successfully pulling off their timing was strangely good at mitigating any irritation they experienced when combat had to slow down to deal specifically with them. The downtime between combat is usually spent platforming, gathering gears, or looking for other secrets as resources. My chief complaint is that when you're not doing anything like initiating the dodge to accelerate yourself, akin to constantly dodge rolling or side jumping in The Legend of Zelda, then Chai's default movement speed feels kind of cumbersome and lumbering. Dodging and jumping are light and agile, so it feels weird by comparison. It could be due to the fact that he does his running animation with his steps maintaining the beat to the backing track, but this could have been somewhat mitigated by having a sprint function by the usual method of pressing L3 and have his steps go in double time for the sprint. Either that or the backing track could have changed to a more rapid punk rhythm, but again, I digress. I was initially feeling down on the between combat platforming and exploration, but in hindsight it did a good job of keeping the pacing varied enough in order to not get bored. At least too much. The exploration phase in between can feel a bit monotonous when you have to be scrambling around to gather gears and other resources to get your upgrades, which more often than not feel unnecessary. As with most games, games like Devil May Cry, you can unlock more varieties of combo and you eventually become jaded to the various different moves you can pull and simply go with one that you like to use, and given the satisfying audio and visual feedback, I felt little if any need to go beyond the base light attack and step with the rhythm. As a weird thing to mention though, while you do get all these bonuses for maintaining the beat, there is no absolute necessity for you to do so. You can just wail on the buttons and get through each combat scenario in a perfectly functional manner. However, personally, once I experienced the satisfaction of maintaining the timing and seeing the rewards manifest on screen, I don't think I could go back. And speaking of going back, I am definitely going to be playing this even after I'm done with this review, which these days is something of a rarity for me. I've been enjoying my time with this one so much that if anyone releases a physical copy of it, I'm going to snatch that up immediately. In case you couldn't tell, I'm loving this one. A guitar melody of pleasing visuals, a solid bass line of interesting characters, the powerful percussion of combat, and a belted singing of the almost perfect game feel. This is a performance you should not miss. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to replay some levels in order to finish getting unlocked and do some more achievement hunting. Hey, look at that, it's the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe and remember that commenting can actually win you a free prize. So until next time, this is a guillotine saying thanks for watching and keep your head on your shoulders.